Hello guys, uh, so in this video uh, we are going to see a great benefit provided by a secure shell or SSH protocol that we can imply to tunnel our tra traffic through SSH in a secure manner. Of course we already know that we use SSH protocol for uh, uh, securely transferring our tunnel traffic, uh, not the tunnel traffic, pardon me, our terminal traffic, like the traffic that we normally use to manage our devices. Uh, could be uh, across the internet. So terminal traffic, just change the color. And another benefit of uh, SSH uh, that we can imply is the extension of X11, which is a uh, uh, graphical interface for Unix based operating system. And the third that we are going to see in this one is tunneling traffic. And this traffic is not that would not be the terminal traffic. It could be a traffic of HTTP. So if your browser is supporting uh, the the option to uh, send the traffic through SSH, which is by the by the way by the use of socks, which is socket secure uh, nowadays uh, normally version 5.0 is implemented in most of the uh, commercially free available browsers including uh, Firefox, Internet Explorer or uh, even Google Chrome. Uh, so uh, traffic types could be HTTP, HTTPS, even Microsoft Skype has this option to support SOX. So whatever application is there, if it is supporting this protocol, it can uh, get the benefit of uh, SSH uh, tunnel traffic uh, facility to securely transfer your traffic over the internet using SSH protocol. In fact, I must add here that uh, there is a protocol which is SFTP, uh, which is secure uh, uh, FTP or SSH uh, based FTP. Uh, it's not like FTP is transferred over the SSH. It's a completely different protocol, this one. But it has been developed by the same working group of IETF that developed the uh, SSH protocol. Uh, so you can use this functionality on uh, uh, Unix-based systems. Uh, talking about this one, uh, train traffic. You can use it on uh, uh, Unix systems as well on Windows-based systems. Uh, for Unix, by default, most of the like I'll be demonstrating on uh, Ubuntu operating system, uh, but most Linux distributions they come up with the SSH client. In case of Window, uh, by default that is not available, so you can simply use the program Putty, which is freely available and very very tiny program from Putty.org. This is the website Putty.org, or whatever the SSH client program that you are comfortable with, you can use it to. Uh, and if it has the option uh, to uh, to use the uh, tunnel mechanism of SSH to securely transfer your traffic. Now the question comes that uh, let me just remove this one. Now the question is that for SSH to work, in fact, from your machine to to wherever you want to connect, you want to have an SSH server. There is a provision to do that. And uh, even for you, uh, if you ever heard of Amazon Web Services, Amazon Web Services, which are the services offered by Amazon, they are uh, having this option that you can create uh, a virtual machine there, free of cost, uh, with certain limitations, like it would have one uh, CPU and one GB of RAM. And this time depends that whether you are using whether you are creating virtual machine based on uh, Linux operating system or maybe based on uh, Windows operating system. Uh, but you will get the machine, uh, and it will be get automatically set up by the by the Amazon. So you just need to uh, be careful that you select a machine uh, from the free tiers of Amazon Web Services offers. Uh, which falls in the free tier category. 
the account creation is also uh, is not a lengthy process. You, Amazon just ensures that you have a valid credit card so that they can charge you after a period of one year when uh, that offer expires for free tier. Uh, for a particular user, like if you create one now, uh, you can use it uh, for up to one year. Uh, with certain limitations like maybe uh, I think it's 750 hours uh, per month you can check it out but it's enough like you can uh, keep on running this machine uh, whatever you create in free tier uh, for 24 by 7 for complete one month and if your volume and by volume me I mean that uh, the bandwidth that you use for in and out from your machine it remains within the confines of the offer uh, I think it's 30 GB so you are good to go uh, you can keep it running for one month. Uh, Amazon has data centers across the world, so uh, you can uh, try to create your virtual machine at one of those locations uh, where you think that maybe uh, it would be a good idea to connect to that server so that you can bypass your local ISP policies. Okay, uh, so once you have your uh, server running with the uh, uh, SSH server daemon or SSH server program or whatever you want to call it and uh, it is accepting connections. You simply need to, I'm going to demonstrate it for, uh, just remove this one. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate it for uh, Linux at the moment and then uh, we'll see that uh, whether we can do it for uh, or how to do it for uh, Windows based programs I'll be demonstrating on Pati. So let me just bring up the terminal and the, the, there is just one command, there is nothing much in here. Uh, this is the by default SSS client program and uh, minus i, this is in fact, uh, I am going to use the uh, file for authentication and my path for file is uh, this, this is the test.pem is the file. Now this is the key point, minus d, it uh, signifies that uh, tunnel my traffic using whatever port is available on your uh, machines. I'm going to use 5001. You can use anything which is uh, beyond the well known ports like uh, uh, beyond 1023. Or even if it is within that range, make sure that it's a unique port. It is not being used by any other program. And then the uh, credentials of the server that I want to uh, connect to. Uh, I have also created a free tier um, Ubuntu based server on Amazon Web Services just for the demonstration of this uh, particular video and this particular functionality. So I am going to pop up that and uh, this is the IP address of the server that I am going to copy and uh, put it back in my terminal over here and just press enter. And I accept this key and we'll see that now we are connected. Now the SSH tunnel is established. And I can also show you one interesting thing. Let me just pull up another terminal over here and uh, type in net stat minus and and this is the thing that I wanted to show you that now our local machine uh, is listening on to a port which is 5001, which we uh, defined once we connected to the uh, remote server uh, using SSH protocol. So now it essentially means that our server is listening on this port. Any application uh, that as I uh, mentioned earlier that uh, has the option for SOX protocol uh, would connect to this port on local machine and our traffic will be tunneled from our local machine to the remote server and from there it will go to the internet. So kind of you will bypass your ISP uh, policies if there are any. So let me just pull up here first and uh, show you that uh, my IP address is the website that I am interested in. So that it shows you, you that what is my current IP address uh, which is this one. And uh, now I am going to go to my settings. Uh, this is the Firefox that I am using, of course you can see it as well. And in advanced, then go into network. Uh, this will be the procedure, uh, uh, might change from browser to browser, but the concept will, will be the same, that you have to find your uh, SOC setting or proxy setting in whatever browser you are using. 
and uh, from there I'm gonna click on manual proxy settings and this is socks host I'm gonna use socks version 5 uh, this is local host you can type in local host as well over here and this is the port that we had defined with the switch of minus D remember and just do OK and now if I uh, refresh this page remember this one that this is 51 36 42 64 now if I refresh this one because my traffic will be tunneled through the uh, through the server as a server that we just connected to whose IP address was this 5258 now we should uh, have this IP address to be shown as my IP address. So it is 5136 which is currently my IP address and now once I refresh the page we will be seeing this IP address. So let's see and uh, maybe it has detected that too many times are coming from this anyway we can give this one EQ U J E D and indeed it is the same as that of this one so my traffic now is passing uh, through the SSH tunnel all the way to the remote server and from there it goes to the website wherever you want to go and then using the same very tunnel comes back to my local machine um, if you are on windows and uh, of course you will not be using command line maybe you will be using like one of the programs which i mentioned earlier like putty so the interface would be like this you would give the remote server's ip address over here and select the ssh protocol and then from here going to ssh click on auth here you will define the key if you are using the private key like i just showed you that i use the test.pem key uh, but remember that uh, uh, putty does not support pen so you will need to change it to ppk which is supported by putty and uh, it's very simple utility you can simply download from putty.org uh, from where you will download the putty client you would download puttygen.exe and in puttygen.exe you would give it the pem key which is uh, supplied by the uh, by the amazon web services once you create your server it will give you the pem key you just import that pen key in putty gen and it will automatically convert it to ppk that ppk key you need to define over here and for tunnels uh, to define the uh, port uh, that we tunnel our traffic through you will click on tunnels and over here you would define the source port uh, like i did for example 5001 and for destination you need to put it as dynamic and then click on add so that you have this entry over here and once you do that uh, you would be able to connect to the uh, you, you you type you click on open and you would be able to connect to the remote server uh, uh, from your windows machine